Raider Nation, my mindset all week. F the Niners. And if you agree with me, go down in the comments section right now, and I want you to start spamming F the Niners as well. Let's show the world, let's show everyone that we still own the Bay. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raider Sport. Today's show is presented by Savvy Lifestyle. Usually, these guys give me a 50% off code, which takes knives that go from $99 down to $49. I want nothing on my show whatsoever, $49 related. So you guys can save 52% off with code 52Raiders at chatsports.com slash knife. Shout out to Savvy Lifestyle for hooking us up with that deal. So what we're talking about here on today's show, we have a lot of injury updates around guys like Nicholas Morrow, Jay. Even White, Nick Kwiatkowski, Darren Lee, Richie Incognito, and with some of these injuries at the linebacker position, some interesting rumors around KJ Wright. Also, I saw a story around the Khalil Mack trade. I'm obviously going to talk about it, and then at the end of today's show, I am once again going to try to project the 80-man roster cuts that need to happen by tomorrow. So the first thing coming up here on today's show is an injury update around Richie Incognito. He was injured during joint practice up against the Rams on Thursday. Some people thought it was a ankle injury. It's actually a calf strain from everything that I hear. There were also reports when he was walking off the bus, you know, he had a pretty bad limp and people didn't know the severity of the injury. Obviously missed week two up against the Rams, but there is a report that he should be ready to go by the first week. I don't anticipate him to practice this week. I don't anticipate Incognito to play in the final preseason game. All you're hoping for is that he is able to go Monday night football against the Baltimore Ravens. The reason why I really need him out on the field, the reason why Raider Nation needs him out on the field, if you've been watching the Raiders offensive line, and I'm not talking about the starters, I'm talking about some of the def like the guys that are backups, it's, uh, it's making me scratch my head because it has not looked good. I have not been impressed whatsoever by Nick Martin, Jared Jones-Smith, Brandon Parker. I mean, even John Simpson does not look good. Omahe, he has been one of the worst offensive linemen this, this entire preseason period. So, like, it is very, very important for Richie Incognito to be out there. So this is why I'm going to ask you this question here. We've had a lot of new subscribers, about 2,000 in the last, like, three weeks, I believe, here at the show. So some of you are wondering, like, what we do. We keep you up to date with news and rumors, but also our show is predicated on being interactive. So go down in the comments section from a scale from 1 to 10. How worried are you about Incognito's injury? I'm going to go here with a 6, and it's starting to ramp up and up. 1 is you're not worried at all. 10 is you're kind of freaking out. The reason why it's a 6 is because, obviously, he missed 14 games last season with an Achilles injury. Now, your Achilles and calf, it's not the exact same thing, but there is a little bit of a connection there that does scare me. He's 38 years old, and with all the bad line play that I've seen so far, I'm going to go ahead and say it's a 6 on the worry meter. Now, we're going to talk about the Raiders' linebacking depth chart because, well, we're starting to run out of depth here. Nicholas Morrow's banged up. Nick Kwiatkowski's banged up. Javen White's banged up. And then even Darren Lee. What I'm going to do now is walk you guys through all these new injury updates on some of these key players here. The first name to monitor is Nicholas Morrow, who I actually believe, if he was fully healthy, probably would have led the team in snaps this year. He's going to be one of the leaders, going to have a green dot on the back of his helmet. He was injured in Thursday's joint practice, also against the Rams. It's kind of why I hate joint practices. Like, if you're not going to play a guy in the preseason because you're working about him getting hurt why the hell are we doing joint practices I mean you saw how chippy it was so I just didn't quite like that he's battling an ankle injury missed week two against the Rams and there was a report out there that Morrow could be out multiple weeks somebody asked me how many Chucky heads in terms of Morrow being able to play in week one on Monday Night Football I probably only going to give it one I'm realistically hoping that Morrow only misses the month of September at least that's what I'm hearing so if Morrow is out a little bit longer of time I can guarantee you one thing we're going to keep you guys up to date here as soon as I get a definite answer on how many games potentially he's going to miss, or maybe he's not going to miss any at all, I'm going to keep you guys updated. So two things. Not only hit that big subscribe button, but I also need you to turn on your notifications. It literally looks like the bell that you guys see here. Again, right underneath the video, click notifications, click all, and if you don't have your notifications enabled, you'll never know when I release a video. So go ahead and enable them. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about here is Nick Wachowski. Maybe a little bit better of some linebacking news. So he's been dealing with an ankle injury as well, was unable to play this past week. Luckily, 
There was a report that came out this morning on Monday that he should be able to practice today. The Raiders are not, not practice today, practice this week. The Raiders aren't practicing today. They got yesterday off. They had today off. They're going to get ready for Tuesday. But it does sound like quit. Will practice this week. I don't see him playing, though, in the final preseason game. More linebacking news. Darren Lee. So remember, he was signed this offseason. I actually heard some people that I personally trust thought that he was going to end up making this 53-man roster. Well, with all the injuries that are kind of battling him right now, I don't know if that's going to happen. He is expected back this week, and with all the injuries at this position, if he is healthy, he is going to play quite a bit in these final preseason game. Now the injury that everyone probably cares about, it's Javen White. I love White. He's been a phenomenal player. He's been flying all over the field. Was one of my big time winners week one. But he left week two against the Los Angeles Rams. And what was kind of scary was, you know, he's really holding that knee. And when you see a player holding their knee that way, it obviously just makes you sick to your stomach. He was helped off the field by teammates. After he was helped off the field, he went into the medical tent. He was not in the tent for very long. He was then carted off the field. He had a towel over his head. He was bawling his eyes out, which obviously you don't like to see. Now, we don't know the severity of this injury either, but there has been multiple reports out there that he actually could end up missing the entire season. What I want you guys to monitor is this, because this is going to be more telling on how severe White's injury is. If White gets placed on the IR... Before August 31st, that's the final day of cuts to get down to the 53-man roster. He's done for the season, and he has to be done for the season. If Las Vegas believes that there's at least a chance that he could potentially play week 18, week 17, week 16, then I think that they actually keep him on the 53, and they wait to put him on the IR after the final cut. So definitely something to think about. Now, I got a really, really cool quote here from John Gruden, but before I go ahead and break that down for you, if you remember, I started the show off by saying today's show is presented by Savvy Lifestyle. And if anybody out there needs an awesome deal on a 17-piece professional knife set, I got you covered. Go to chatsports.com slash knife. Don't worry. That link is available for you all in the comments and in the description. And I'm saving you 52% off. Usually we do 50%. $99.99, you cut it down, it's $49.99. I want nothing on my screen that says 49 this week because I want to take care of the bay. I want to show everyone that we still own it. So use code 52 Raiders at chatsports.com slash knife to save 52% on a 17-piece stainless steel all blacked out knife set. All right, as promised here, here is the quote from John Gruden on some of these linebacking injuries. There is a concern, obviously, with Nick Morrow. His foot is being evaluated, and Javen White looks like he hurt his knee. So we're out a couple of linebackers. Lee couldn't play tonight, so obviously this is a quote right after the Raiders game up against the Rams. Couldn't play tonight, so we're light at linebacker right now. It's a concern. Kwiatkowski is going to be okay. We think he's going to be ready to go this week, but he couldn't go tonight. So obviously with all these injuries out there, there's one name that continues to pop up into my mind. And I'm like, is it going to happen? I don't know. Should it happen? Maybe. So what I'm going to talk about now is free agent linebacker K.J. Wright because he is still out there on the market. And when you talk about the top two teams battling him for him, I believe it's the Raiders, and I actually also believe it's the Seattle Seahawks. And the Seahawks, they just lost one of their linebackers, Ben Burkirvin, to an ACL injury. So, like, that could even open up the door for Wright to go back there. Remember, he had an official visit with Las Vegas about, I'm going to say, three weeks ago at this point. Left there without signing a deal. And when you talk about all these injuries, if the Raiders are worried that some of these linebackers are going to miss a significant amount of time, especially Morrow, why not pick up the phone and potentially give K.J. Wright a call? So, he left Las Vegas without signing a deal. And the question I've been continuing to get asked is, like, Mitch, with all these injuries, do you think that the Raiders should go out and sign K.J. Wright? I'm going to give you my answer here in a sec, but first, I want you guys to go down in the comments and let me know. Why for yes or end for no? Should the Raiders go out and sign K.J. Wright? I believe the reason why he left, he was looking for a little bit more money. Now it's going to be interesting because if the Seahawks and the Raiders are the top two teams, both have some linebacking injuries out there, you might have to pay him a little bit more dinero, which I'm okay with. So why for yes and for no should the Raiders sign K.J. Wright? right. 
My answer is yes. Four chalky heads, believe it, baby. I am actually worried about Nicholas Morrow's injury. Obviously, I'm worried about Javen White missing the entire season. Kwiatkowski's already been banged up. You need to have solid linebacking depth to be successful in this Gus Bradley system. Have we yet to see Divine Diablo? Sure, but that is still a player that I'm not 100% confident that can come in and contribute right away. And I'm not trying to rip on the guys we have. We have a very good linebacking room. But K.J. Wright, in my opinion, would still be the team's best linebacker. That's how good he truly is. 86 tackles last year. He plays all over the football field. And he knows the system. Like, one of the biggest reasons why I would love this deal. Remember how great, uh, what's his name? Oh, man. Oh, the old linebacker for the Raiders. Perfect. Jesus, Mitch. Get it together. Perfect was a great fit in the Gunther system because he knew it and he was able to teach some of these other players. That's what K.J. Wright is going to be able to do. Teach some of these guys, get everyone in the right position, and still, you need depth. So, yes, I'm saying go out and get K.J. Wright. Now, if you guys love the t-shirt I have on, if you want some brand new Raiders t-shirts, what I want you to do is go to autumnabyss.com. Once you go to the website, you can click Enter the Abyss and you can actually see Save 20% off on all of their awesome apparel. The reason why I absolutely love this company, their shirts are com more comfortable than Nike dry fit. So that's definitely something to think about. High quality as well, and all their shirts go to a good quality, so or a good cause. Tom Flores hoodies, they go to the Tom Flores Foundation. If you know you have a shirt that's the start in the town one, those go to some kids in Oakland, like helping them get into school or go help them get into some sporting events. Like, there's all sorts of awesome things going on. That's what Autumn Abyss does. They are a company made by the nation, and they are for the nation. So go to AutumnAbyss.com, high-quality Raiders apparel. If you have any questions whatsoever on some of the shirts that I own, I have six or seven of their shirts, and I have yet to run into any issues. So, seriously, go get yourself some gear, AutumnAbyss.com, also in the comments and in the description. Let's go to the next story here. It's around Khalil Mack, and did the Raiders try to trade for him this offseason? I'm going to give this one four Chucky heads, believe it, baby. And I actually can't even believe I'm coming out right and saying this because Vic Tafer of The Athletic was talking about the Raiders offseason and how, you know, they, they went out and they signed Yannick Gakwe. But before they went out and signed Gakwe, they picked up the phone and they called the Chicago Bears about, hey, what's the availability of Khalil Mack? The reason why, obviously, this is super ironic is because the Raiders traded Khalil Mack to Chicago for two firsts, a third, and a fifth. The Raiders are trying to free up some money. Mack ended up signing there for a six years, $141 million. There's no doubt that Chicago has some cap issues, but obviously Chicago's like, no, we're going to keep him. And honestly, the Raiders should have done the exact same thing. He's a phenomenal talent. But this is what Tafer had to say on the Raiders trading for Mack. They made a phone call, league sources said, would the Bears be interested at all in trading Mack to the Raiders? The Bears had significant salary cap issues, which forced them to release all-pro cornerback Kyle Fuller and restructure several other contracts. The Raiders thought it was worth a shot. The Bears were not interested, and the Raiders went ahead and signed Gakwe to a two-year, $26 million deal. So now the question I'm going to ask is this, and I'm genuinely curious. Who do y'all think is going to have the better 2021 season? I want you to type KM for Khalil Mack, or I want you to type YN for Yannick Gakwe. And I am super excited for Gakwe. I think he's saying and doing all the right things. He is going to end up having a phenomenal year. But is it also going to be a better year than Khalil Mack? Plus, Gakwe is only 26 years old. I believe he's two years younger than Mack. So, like, I'm not trying to take any away from Khalil, but Gakwe is also, I think, going to be a great fit in this Bradley defense. I can't wait to see the answers to this. KM for Khalil Mack or YN for Yannick Gakwe? If you want to know who I think is going to have a better season, you can always hit me up on Instagram at MitchellRent365. I'm going to save that one for you all. The other reason why I always tell people to hit me up on IG, my DMs are open. I get a lot, a lot of Raiders questions and I am more than happy to answer them but what I really love are messages like this so I got this one from Karen which says hey Mitch Raider fan from Vancouver love your takes my brother passed away over five months ago and he has a Jack Tatum jersey I wanted to see if you have or have any just so I can dedicate it to him only one nation, Raider Nation, just win, baby. So obviously, Karen, I am so sorry for your loss. RIP, everyone, please type RIP down in the comments. But I told her, hey, send me a picture of your brother. We'd love to put him on the Raiders report. Anytime I hear stuff about this, I'm a big-time family man. And if there's a way where I can help put a smile on your face, put a smile on your family's face, and I know your brother right now is looking down, smiling on the Raiders report. So seriously, guys, don't ever be afraid to hit me up. We can share our experiences, Raider Nation's family, and I'm here for that. All right, the next thing coming 
coming up here on today's show. Notable cut dates. Remember, the Raiders went from an 85 or a, a 90 to an 85 man roster last week. They have to get down to an 80 man roster by August 24th, which is tomorrow on Tuesday. But the Raiders made some of their cuts the day before. So last week, I was one for five. 20%. Not great. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to go two for five this week. Obviously projecting the final five guys on a roster is super difficult. And like I said last week, if I can just get one or two of these right, I'm going to go ahead and pat myself on the back. So here are my projected cuts to get down to the 80-man roster. Jeremiah Patazzi, offensive lineman. He's like the fourth guy in the rotation right now. Alex Ellis has not been very impressive at the tight end position. Kamal Seymour, he's on the NFI list. Tavon Coney, and then Corliss Waitman. I don't know why you need two punters. I would just say if you're trying to keep an extra guy or two, get rid of the last punter. Those are my five projected cut date or five projected cuts for the Andy Man roster. Now I'm not quite done with the show yet. Usually the people that make it to the very end of the video, those are my guys. Like Those are the people that I, I respect. Those are the people I appreciate. So I'm hoping you guys don't let me down now. Obviously, the Raiders are going up against the 49ers this week. Well, we just hired a brand new guy who's kind of from like my hometown. His name's Chase, and he's the 49ers host. But what I want you guys to do is this. I want you to go heckle him a little bit. Give him hell. Go to his Instagram, at Chase underscore senior, and I want you to message him some pretty redunculous stuff. It can be Go Raiders. It can be Raiders. It can be whatever. I don't know if it's spelled this way or if it's spelled that way down there. Either way, it's Chase underscore senior. Go message him and give him hell on the 49ers show because I would definitely appreciate it. And this upcoming week, we're actually going to be doing a Raiders against 49ers watch party. So he says that he can drink. He thinks that he can hang with the nation. We're about to find out. Go give my man some hell on Instagram at Chase underscore senior and tell them really who owns the bay.